There are many cars that don't like you selecting first gear when you're on the move, particularly when the gearbox is cold. It can be very stiff and feel like it just doesn't want to go in. In this video, I'm gonna explain what may be the cause of the issue and how you can adapt your driving style to get round it. Oh, and did I mention this video is in affiliation with Collingwood Insurance? I'll talk about them later. Firstly, I'm gonna talk about this Sayat Leon. I've had this car since it was brand new, and when I got it, the gears were lovely. I could select first gear on the move, no problem, even with a cold gearbox. But as the miles piled on, the gears gradually got stiffer. By the time it had 80,000 miles on the clock, I could hardly select first gear on the move at all. I practically had to come to a standstill. So I replaced the gear oil. And to my delight, the new gear oil solved the problem. The gears were like new again. So changing the gear oil may be the answer to your problems, but not always. However, this Mazda is a brand new car. Well, it's four months old and the gearbox has been a right pain to get into first gear on the move when it's cold. For example, now I'm doing 10 miles an hour. I'll try and select first, nope. Go a bit slower, five miles an hour, nope. One mile an hour and there you go, it goes in. So. Replacing the gearbox oil isn't always gonna solve the issue. This is a new car with new gear oil, yet it still doesn't wanna select first gear until I'm nearly at a standstill. But this is a very common issue. And in some cars, you can't select first gear until you're at a standstill, even when the gearbox is warm. There's no way to solve this issue because it's not a mechanical problem. It's just, just a characteristic of the car. But what you can do is learn to adapt your driving to get round it. The good news is you rarely need first gear when you're on the move. If you're getting too slow for second gear, simply press the clutch down and coasting, are we? Oh, where did you come from? Yes, but this is good coasting. Coasting is a necessary part of driving a manual car well when you're very slow. Coasting can only really be a problem when you're at speeds of above, let's say about 10 miles an hour, 16 kilometers an hour, or if you need power to accelerate to, pull out of a junction or cross the path of traffic. Very well, but I'm afraid I've still got to fail you because I've got no pass certificates. Ah, right, well, let's see then. Well, uh, that's debatable. Ah, ah, oh, here we go. That's perfect. What? Yes. I don't even have a moustache. As I was saying before I was rudely interrupted, if you need to go slower than second gear can handle, simply press the clutch down and coast. Coasting at very low speeds is not a problem. And I'm gonna go all the way down to two miles an hour and leave in second, and then I'm gonna move away again in second gear. So that's two miles an hour, bit of gas, bit of bite point, hold the clutch on the bite point for a few seconds for it to do its job, come fully off the clutch now it's done its job, and the clutch has had no trouble at all moving me away in second gear. And that's not gonna burn the clutch out, the clutch is designed to do that. However, if you're on a hill, in which case, if you use second gear and the clutch to get yourself moving at very low speeds, you will most likely burn your clutch. As I'll demonstrate now, I'm gonna push the clutch down. I'm in second gear. And when it gets to two miles an hour, I'll try and continue using the gas and the clutch. There we go, two miles an hour. Gas and bite point. Oh, the car's struggling. Holding the clutch still, holding the clutch still. And it's just about finished now. So I had to hold the clutch on the bite point there for a long time. That is gonna cause excessive wear to your clutch in not a large amount of time. So you really want to avoid using second gear when you're trying to get going uphill because that's going to burn the clutch. So how are you going to get it into first gear so you can move uphill? Well, there are a few tools at your disposal. Well, they're not actually tools, they're more methods. Anyway, first bit of advice. Don't shove the gear stick hard. Don't think it's hard to get in. So the correct response should be, let's give the gear stick a good hard shove to get it into gear. That's going to put strain on your gearbox that could damage something avoid that what you actually want to do is use progressive pressure so push it towards first gear which is left and forwards gradually increase pressure until it slots in that gives the synchro meshes time to line up so they can slot into place another bit of advice would be to rev the engine as you do it so as you're pushing it towards first give a little rev of the engine and i find that often really helps it go into first it shouldn't because when your clutch is down, your gearbox and your engine are completely disconnected. However, I believe sometimes there is a partial connection there. So spinning up the engine, revving the engine does spin the input shaft of your gears, which helps first gear slot into place. 
And the final one, which I'm gonna demonstrate in a second, is the double D clutch. This should certainly help you. It's a bit harder. What you do is clutch down into neutral, clutch up, rev the engine to about 3,000, at least 3,000 RPM, then quickly clutch down and push the gear stick towards first and hold it towards first. And as the input shaft of the gear, gearbox slows down, it should slot into place. The first demonstration is to rev the engine as I try to select first gear. So I'm gonna slow down a little bit. I'm still going quite quick, 15 miles an hour, but I'll try it here anyway. So clutch down, push it towards first, rev the engine, and that helped it slot into place. And that also has the added benefit that the revs are a little bit higher, which helps you lift the clutch up. So next demonstration is the double D clutch. So I'm in second gear again. What I'll do now is I'll clutch down into neutral, good hard rev of the engine, clutch down, hold it towards first. I actually went in very easy that time. Um, no resistance there. Well, there's a tiniest bit of resistance. I can't say there was no resistance, but it really slotted into place very easily there. I'll now demonstrate the double D clutch method again, just to give you a second chance of seeing that. So I'm, doing, I'm actually gonna do it a bit faster. I'm gonna do 20-ish miles an hour, and I'm gonna do the double D clutch method to get first gear. Let's go. So clutch down into neutral, good hard rev of the engine, clutch down to, oh yes, yeah, so easy. And then you just gotta be careful now lifting the clutch up in first gear when you're going that fast, because it does want to slow down unless you give some gas. I actually have a video all about double D clutching. I'll link to it in the top right hand corner of your screen. At the beginning of the video, I mentioned that this car is quite good at going into first gear when I'm on the move, particularly since I started changing the gearbox oil every 40,000 miles. It's actually quite a nice slick gear stick. But asking any car to go into first gear above 10 miles an hour is asking a lot and it's gonna be quite stiff. I actually did it at 20 miles an hour there using the double D clutch method. In the last attempt that I just showed you, when I used the double D clutch method at 20 miles an hour, when I went to put the gear stick into first gear, I surprised myself because I didn't feel any resistance at all. It was almost like the gear stick kind of fell into place on its own. Well, I hope this video helps. If you think it does, please give it a thumbs up. And how about checking out Collingwood and Confused in the description? If you're learning to drive and want to insure yourself on somebody else's car, Collingwood may be the insurer for you because you can insure yourself on somebody else's car without affecting their no claims bonus and without risking their policy. That takes away a big stress when it comes to learning to drive with a supervisor. The supervisor is gonna be less stressed out about you ruining their insurance premium. At the moment via the link, there's up to 30% off and a 20 pound Amazon gift card. Using that link does support this channel. If you're insuring your own car, I recommend checking out confused.com because with confused.com, you can fill out one quote form and you get many quotes back from different insurers so you can find out who's cheapest. And you can also change the car multiple times as well without having to redo the entire quote form. So it's a good way of comparing how much it costs to insure each car. Using the link again does support this channel. So thank you very much. If you want to get my future videos, please subscribe. I also have an Instagram page and a Facebook page now, Conquer Driving. And until the next one, cheerio.